Hi, this is Caleb with Practical Dad's Advice, and today I'm going to show you the basic tips, tricks, and ways of using DAWS Studio 4.8. So this is going to be a beginner's guide tutorial to this amazing 3D program. So you open up DAWS Studio, and there's a lot here that if you're not used to 3D at all, is probably not going to make much sense. First off, how do you even move because you're like moving towards the thing and right click and left click and it says no context and that's exactly what you don't have and so you're hitting your arrow keys and that's not doing anything and you're like okay so maybe I hold shift and no that's not doing anything so you're holding you press down both buttons and drag and that's still not doing anything so and then oh oh okay so the middle scroll button that that seems to zoom in and zoom out that's helpful all right you got that down so even just moving the camera seems to be a difficulty well that's what this multicolored box right here oh, look at that you can orbit orbit that works pretty good this is called a gizmo that's that's its actual names. That's what all of these things are called, or gizmos. A wonderful naming department in the 3D in the 3D division. So we got our gizmo, and they got the, their labels on it. And if I if I click on it, it, it has these presets. So I click on that corner, and look at that. And I click there. Click 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 click. Got it. Good. Go to the front. So here I got orbit, and that just does the exact same thing the box did. Here's my these four arrows. That's pan. So if I click and hold, I can pan around. That's cool. I have the magnifying glass, and that allows me to zoom when I hold and move my mouse. Uh, this button here will will focus me on whatever I have selected, but I don't have anything in my scene. You see, I got the scene tabs and parameters and content library, and all this stuff's kind of strange, and there's nothing here. And then I got this button that puts me right back to where I started. Which is always good to have because if you get lost, you get way down someplace and you can click and you're right back to where you started. So I'm going to bring in a figure that I already made for this purpose. See, now I got something in my scene. And if I notice when I click on her this all this stuff changes and if I unselect it it adds and takes away stuff and what that is is this is smart content what that means is, is it's going to grab everything that applies for this figure so it's only going to show me the wardrobe items that fit on that figure so if I unselect it it shows me all the items that I have period that are that are searchable in the smart content so if I want to add a figure see I got all these figures here these are all these figures but if I want to see what 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 uh, what morphs fit and work with her then I select her and now these are all the morphs that are in the same generation as her so that's pretty cool so I got the wardrobe and I got I got parameters and you have your three dimensions with that's where the three comes in the 3d that's what 3d stands for is three dimensions your first is red or x axis which goes for our purposes at least left to right so if i move her left to right see look at that and then i can rotate her left i can rotate her on the x axis that means is that it's drawing a line this way and it's using that line to rotate her see so it's either moving on that axis or being rotated on that axis put those back at zero so we're starting zero zeros across the board is where you want to start that's that's how you want to start anything and then the next thing we got is the y axis and that goes up and down up and down look at that up and down and then rotate on the Y so it draws a line straight through her center like that and it rotates her on that on that line okay so it's like a pole straight through the top of her head the last is the Z axis which for our purposes is back and forth so back 
forth, front, and back. That's what we got there. And so it uses this line to rotate her on the Z axis. That's Z. It's blue. It's the Z axis. Okay? We're not going to worry about scaling right now. <laughs> Get to that maybe some other time. So, what I talked about this button real briefly. I want to show you in more detail. So let's say I want to I want to do something with her thumb. I want to look on her thumb intensely. So I just click it and boom, there it is. There's the thumb. It's really right there. And I go back to this thing. So anything that I have selected, that's what it brings in. It brings it real close, which is nice. If I got a big scene, I got a lot going on, and I want to focus on something, jump across the the scene but I don't want to have to scroll and pan and try and find it I can just select it in my scene here and then boom got it it's right there so boom <laughs> right there I didn't mean to do that I swear I didn't mean to do that pectoral muscle pectoral muscle names are fun so if I select her, and let's say I don't really like this uh, makeup that she's got here, right? I, I don't like this makeup. So I can select her, and I go to the materials in my smart content. And I go under feminine, and her name is Meeling6. So I scroll down, because this is all alphabetical, and there's Meeling. And those are all the materials that were designed for this with this model in mind. So I'm gonna I'm gonna give her green eyeshadow. Oh look at that! It's very pretty. It is very pretty. So yeah, that's cool. Uh, she needs some hair. I don't want her to be bald. So I'm gonna select her. I'm gonna find the hair, which is right there. And these are all the hairs that fit on her. So I I want this hair. So I pick that hair. Look at that. But it's but it's all white and kind of strange looking. It's not textured. It, you know, it's ugly. It doesn't it doesn't look like everything else. So I select it there, and it brings up the things that fit with that object. So look at that. There's all my there's all my materials that work with that object. So I can have her be a redhead or green or white the ever popular blonde uh, I'm gonna go with black though so the, there she goes she's got she's got her black hair now and you know I want I want to reposition these bangs a little bit so uh, with my hair selected I'm gonna go to parameters and I'm gonna go to movement and I want the front so there we go. I want I want the bangs out of her face a little bit. So there, there. Yeah, that looks nice. Not too much. There we go. Now the bangs are out of her face a little bit. It's very very nice. And it just depends on what object, depending on what the creator put in as morphs, as to what you're going to have. So on my scene here, you know I wanna I wanna find her right hand, right? So. I can right click on it and go to expand and expand from selection and that opens up and shows me all the bones that is in this figure and the bones are what you use to move the figure so I can grab a right hand now I have a right hand selected and using my gizmo I move her whole body just by that hand leading her by the hand quite literally if I want to go more freeform, I can select the hand directly. See, I'm leading her by the hand. But let's say I get her all messed up, all twisted up. You know, this is it's not what I want. And I'm like, okay, so how do I how do I fix this? Well, I got a couple options. I can go to Edit and Undo and just hit Control Z a bunch of times, or hit Control Z a bunch of times, and there I got her back. Or if I got her all pose all jacked up and I don't I don't like it I can select her click on this little dude right here and restore figure pose she goes right back to center so there we are look at that look at that that's awesome so under wardrobe 
these are the items that are going to fit on her. And so I want to put this dress on her. So there's that dress. And I want to put... Where is it? I want to put da, 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 this jacket on her. Look at that. But but now the clothes that were on her, they're they're sticking out. You know that that doesn't look nice. That doesn't look good at all. So I'm going to collapse this selection because I had is way too much. <coughs> I don't need all that. And I'm going to click on this and I'm going to click that little eyeball. I'm going to click on this top uh, piece, and that little eyeball, and boom. I didn't delete them, I just made them invisible. If I wanted to delete them, I can select them and hit delete on my keyboard. I'm going to undo that, or right click and hit delete. Now, let's bring in a prop. So nothing too big too fancy we're gonna bring in this fan because why not so we got this fan and I can spend all this time trying to, to move it and maneuver it to, to fit in her hand and all of that fun stuff you know and and, and do all that and I, I get it right where I want it but then I grab her and move her and the fan stays where it is. So what I need to do is I need to tell the fan that you belong to the hand. So the way I do that is I click on the fan, right click, and I change the fan's parent. I don't want to parent in place. Sometimes you do. <coughs> I want it to parent, uh, I want it to go to the hand. So it's got all the bones open here. So I'm gonna minimize some of those. And there, there's the right hand. So I click on that and I hit accept. And wow, it's, it's in the right hand now. <coughs> and I need to adjust it a little bit because you know it's, it's dug into her, into her flesh there and that's not what we want. So I'm gonna move it, grab it, probably rotate it a little bit. There we are. There. Now it's starting to look, you know, the way it should. It's starting to, it's starting to be, starting to be right. There we go. Now when I, when I grab her and I move her, her around, the, the fan goes with her. So now she's got a fan. So if I select her and I put a pose on her under poses, so these are all the poses that are made for her which I'll talk about more in part two. And I, oh, this pose is good. So I got this pose now. I can grab her hand, go to parameters, and I'm moving that single bone. See, it has the one bone selected in the, in the scene, and then I have what I can do with that bone and then I have what's called pose controls. So I want her to grasp the fan a little bit, but not too much, just a little bit. There we go. Now she's being all coy with the fan. Look at that. There we are. She's fanning herself. Pretty neat. Pretty neat indeed. <coughs> so. 
So those are some good basics to get you started with and we'll go into a little more depth in part two and we'll talk about these little four gizmos, these basic tools up here which are very important to everything that you do. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about poses and we'll talk about uh, rendering a little bit. So I'll see you in part two. Um, this is Caleb with Practical Daz Advice. Be at peace.